Hello grade 11s. In this lesson we're going to continue talking about solution chemistry. Our next topic is stock solutions. So here we're going to look at what a stock solution uh, means, what, what, that, what it is, and also figure out how to dilute substances. Okay, but before we do that, <clears throat> we're going to look at a question to review what we covered in our last lesson. So uh, let's begin. Make sure I have my pen going here. Okay. So here it gives us a certain mass of sodium hydroxide, and it says that this amount is dissolved in 450 mils of water. What is a molar concentration? So we know that molar concentration is C um, is equal to N over V, where N is the number of moles and V is volume in liters. So uh, something I can do right away is convert milliliters to liters, right? Divide that by a thousand and we get 0 0.450 liters. Okay, now we don't have moles, we have volume, we don't have moles, but we have mass, and we know that it's of sodium hydroxide. So to figure out moles back from our last unit, it's mass divided by molar mass, which is 0.25 grams given to you in the question, divided by, if you look up the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, it's approximately 23 grams per mole. I don't have this worked out in front of me, so I'm gonna pull out a calculator Okay, so 0.25 divided by 23, uh, 01087, let's say, 01087. So I always like to keep uh, four or five digits, knowing that the seven I got, to, I got uh, from rounding the six to a seven because of the nine that comes after it. Okay, so this is moles of sodium hydroxide. So to figure out our molar concentration, you don't want to round beyond four or five digits as you're doing a question. So you write all the digits down. I'm going to write 0 0.450 liters. Plug that into my calculator. So I already have that value. Divide by 0 0.45, 0 0.02415, 0.02415. Five, and that's moles per liter or big M for molar concentration. But going back to the question, we have two sig figs here, two sig figs here, so we round to two sig figs, which is 0 0.024 moles per liter. Right? You can write it in a scientific notation if you want, 2.4 times 10 to negative 2, but you don't have to. It doesn't say, doesn't say 2. Okay, so now moving on, our lesson it's on stock solution. So naturally we should begin with a definition after we reviewed a bit. So our, our definition for stock solution is a solution of known concentration for lab use. So for any um, specific use of a concentration of a certain compound that's um, going to be available in the lab, that's essentially defined as a stock solution. So just like you would buy something in a, in a store online, if they have it in stock, you can go ahead and use it. It's made for a purpose. Uh, it's, re it's ready and prepared for a purpose, so the concentration is known. So a solution that is on a shelf, ready to go, uh, is called a stock solution. It's made um, with a certain concentration for a certain lab use. Okay, for certain practical lab use. Now, talking about practicality, um, what practical reasons are there for selling concentrated chemicals instead of dilute chemicals? So, um, it's you could buy dilute solutions um, if you're working in a lab, uh, or you can buy concentrated solutions. So, at first, you might think, well, maybe the con the, the diluted solutions are safer. They are safer. Um, so, we should just work on getting those, but there are practical reasons for purchasing concentrated solutions over dilute ones. Okay, so many concentrated solutions are hazardous, right? More concentrated, more hazardous they can be, especially if we're talking about acids and bases, but they're actually easier to store. We would need to have a lot more diluted solutions lying around um, of varying concentrations, so that would be harder to store, which would actually make it more hazardous because there's more of it to worry about. Um, so although concentrated solutions are more hazardous to store, um, they uh, one small bottle can go a very long way, and that one bottle can be stored a lot a lot easier than many others. Uh, it's also better to more cost efficient to transport, right? Just one bottle, perhaps, uh, compared to many. Um, it's also for that reason better for the environment, right? Less to transport across a certain distance means less CO two emissions. 
Okay, so dilute solutions are often preferred, right? For labs, for lab use. Not always, but usually. It's then important to have to dilute those concentrated solutions. So this is something we're going to need to know how to do. Okay, so the concentration of a solution compared, comparing a concentrated solution to a um, more dilute solution, one with more water, we can say something important about the comparison of about these solutions when we about these two solutions when we compare them. So if you count the number of particles in this beaker to the left and the number of particles in the beaker to the larger beaker to the right, you'll see that they're the same. So we can then say that the moles of our moles in our concentrated solution are then equal to the moles in our diluted solution. Okay, count yourself. Volume is different. Um, and because the volume is different, we can also say that the concentration is different, right? So if this is the concentrated one, this is a diluted one, they're going to have different uh, concentrations. But what we, what we can say is that the moles of each of them are going to be the same. So because moles of concentrate equals moles of dilute, we can do a bit of math. Okay, again, these uh, square brackets here, they also represent the letter C as we've, rev as we've reviewed, right? C is equal to N over V. Okay, so I'll sometimes use them interchangeably, although I do prefer C. Okay, so because NC is equal to ND, we can then say VC or volume concentrated times concentration concentrated is equal to volume dilute times concentration dilute. Okay, let's review a bit of this. So we're looking at this, we're going to, we're going to, um, manipulate this this equation algebraically so that we get an n is equal to something. So if we cross multiply, we get that n is equal to c times v. Okay, now we know that nc can be written like this with c subscripts just to be more specific. And therefore nd can be written like this. But because these two are equal, right, we can equate them. So we can get, and this is just a different way of depicting this, this here, uh, VC, CC, VC, CC is equal to VD, um, CD, right? So this is our, what's called a dilution formula. Okay, this is our dilution formula. Um, otherwise written as uh, C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2, where one represents the initial concentration and volume, two represents the diluted concentration and volume, right? But these are essentially the same, right? A couple of examples. So first, explain how you would prepare 12 liters, that's a lot, 12 liters of a three molar concentration of ammonia from a 15 molar concentration of ammonia. Okay, so write down what you're given. We need to figure out how much of the um, what volume of the concentrated solution we need to make the more dilute solution. This is what it's what we have to figure out first. Um, information that's given to us is that we know the concentration is at 15 molar. We want how much of it do we want? We want 12 diluted liters of it at a much lesser concentration, a three molar concentration. Okay, here's our formula. Sorry, that's a bit small. Maybe I can make that larger. Oh, well, not with the red. Mm, no, it's a group picture. Okay, so so VC um, concentration C. So volume concentrated concentration concentrated is equal to same for the dilute version. Okay, we're going to solve for using a bit of grade nine science or grade nine math. Um, VC is then equal to VD CD over CC plug in your known values, 12 liters times three moles per liter divided by 15 moles per liter, and we get 2.4 liters. Okay, now what does that mean? This is the important part. So since you need 2.4 liters of your concentrated solution, think of it this way. 2.4 liters is how much came from your concentrated solution, but you don't want 2.4 liters, you want 12 liters, and that's what you solve for. So what that means is you, the rest of this is has to be water. So if 2.4 liters is a concentrated 
um, molar concentrated to a 50 molar concentration solution. The rest of it to dilute has to be filled up to a to the 12 liter mark, assuming there's an imaginary beaker that says 12 liters. Um, meaning then that 12 minus 2.4 is 9.6. So you need then 9.6 liters of water. So explain. This is how we would explain it then. So here's my verbal explanation. To make a 12 liter solution of three molar concentration, from a 50 molar concentration, you need 2.4 liters of the concentrated amount. Then to that, you would add 9.6 liters of water. Okay. I do have to say something about uh, making these diluted solutions. Okay, here is a trick that I remember. All right, so I just um, found a picture of a volumetric flask to show you how to create or how to um, come up with these diluted solutions safely. So well, now that you know your, in the last question, you know your uh, volume of your concentrated amount, right? So instead of, this is what not to do. Okay, so what not to do. So don't pour in your concentrated amount and then add water to that. It's going to rapidly ionize and it'll, it'll release hydrogen. So if you're working with acids, I'm, I'm referring to it'll rapidly ionize and it'll uh, release acid, um, gaseous forms of acid um, into, into the air and that can be very dangerous. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so that's what not to do. Instead, what you should do <clears throat> is first so say you're making one liter and say this little marking in this piece of glass where uh, right here represents that one liter you want to fill up um, measure in a graduated cylinder roughly um, you know that uh, say you only need say you have 10 mils of your concentrated solution is what you need um, so you can even you can fill this all the way up say well past 900 uh, milliliters of water. So let's say you fill this up, right? 900, 800, I don't really do too much, uh, that much, just about 500 or so, um, enough to um, immediately dilute the water, sorry, that's wrong, immediately dilute the acid the second it hits water, or moments after it hits the water. So put in roughly, I'm gonna say 500, I know I said nine, but let's say 500, uh, mills of water. So that this is just H2O, just water. To that, then you add your concentrated 10 mils here, your 10 mils of acid. Okay, so always add, always add acid to water. Like the alphabet, A comes before W. Never add, so this is wrong, Never add water to acid. That's dangerous. Okay, so always water first, have some water, uh, then to that add your uh, concentrated volume of, of acid. In the question, that was 2.4 liters. Um, here, I just made up a value 10 mils being added to about 500. So once you're done that part, you've added your 10 mils in this case of acid to water, then it'll, it'll volume will go up slightly, right? Then very carefully reading the meniscus properly, you're going to add some more water all the way up to your graduation, your one mil graduation here. Not one mil, one liter. Okay, next question. A sterile solution of a physiological saline, so that's aqueous sodium chloride, uh, is prepared for use in hospital by using sterile water to dilute 20 mils of sterile three molar concentrated saline to a total volume a lot going on here so it's really important to begin to write down what you're given uh, to a total volume of 400 mils what is the molarity of the resulting saline solution right so you're given um, your volume of your concentrated amount okay, it's 20 mils okay it, was, it tells you 20 mils of our concentrated amount right so 20 mils convert that right away to liters just divide by a thousand uh, gives you its concentrated amount, then it says uh, to a volume of 400 mils. So in that new concentration, that diluted solution now is 400 mils, which is really 0.4 liters. What is the molarity? So what is the concentration of the resulting solution? So what is the concentration of the diluted solution? That's what you're asked to figure out. Okay, so here's our formula again. 
VC concentration C, so our concentration and end, our diluted end, and we can rearrange, right? Plug in what we know. Notice that your units will cancel out. And turns out that the concentration of the new solution is 0.15 moles per liter. That's it. Being able to interpret the question, pull out the important stuff, important information given to you, figure out what it's being asked, what is being asked of you, plugging that in then is not the hard part, it's more of the interpreting the question. So those are your parts to solve a couple of different types of dilution questions. Okay, it's important you are able to explain how to dilute. Right, we'll have a, a lab shortly on this, a virtual lab on this, and I'll go over that explanation again a bit, uh, a bit better at that, that time, uh, is what you'll see then. Um, but these two different examples give you two different kinds of dilution questions to go over. So that's it. There's a lot of practice for you to do. Um, continue to ask questions and we'll see you next time.